suffering on in your body has brought you. I'm not talking about your neighbor. If you know that you know like you know that he's brought you from a fire a long way, why don't you give him a praise? Thank you. 
word of protection in the name of Jesus, a word of projection right now, a word of ejection, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Let it fix what's broken. Let it heal what's sick. Have you win all that we say for all that we do? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord, amen. In the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number nine. Amen. I just want to read three verses, just three verses, amen. I want to share with God through me on this relationship between faith and harvest. And the thing is harvesting your faith. But I want to talk about the relationship between your harvest and your faith. Amen. And the King James Version, I want to start with verse number. 35, it says, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he to his disciples, the harvest truly is painless, but the laborers are here. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. May God bless his already blessed work. I can see it. Amen. There's nothing better than a church today than hearing the sound of young babies. Yeah. I just want to tell you right now, you don't bother. Uh, that you let do what they do The reason why is because if you don't have any young babies in your church today, you don't have any young kids, amen, you're not planning on being a church too long. There was a time when you chased them out, go and just sit down and shut up, be quiet, amen. Now I've learned to love when they scream in the vestibule. I say, thank you, Jesus. Boy, young boys in here, right now. You know, even more encouraging is when you have young families bringing their young babies to church, amen. I said this morning to Shiloh, and I might as well say that's a special blessing for y'all bringing your kids to church. It's one level of blessing when you send them, but some of us need a little bit better blessing, amen. We've been waiting on a breakthrough, so I got to bring them to church, amen, and see what God has for us as a family, amen. amen. The relationship on faith and harvest, I just want to talk about just these few verses. It started off by reading from Jesus. The Bible says he went into their synagogues uh, and the cities, and, the, and he taught them the kingdom of heaven. And then it says he healed every sickness and every disease among them. Now, notice it didn't say that he healed them. Right. Uh, get ready for a harvest. I'm going to tell you, when, when, when God's got a harvest in your future, sometimes he's got to heal some stuff around you. Sometimes we get caught up with the wrong book. And God ain't denying our blessing, but he's only delaying it because he needs to heal some sickness. Help me on my Facebook. Uh, we got some disease that's over here on my child. And, and what God will do, Jesus healed everything that was around them that was impure. He's getting somebody ready for a harvest. And some of us sometimes feel that we are left behind because maybe someone walked out on us. Maybe it was your BFF. Maybe it was your best friend forever. Maybe it was your road dog, your ride or die. But sometimes every now and then what God is doing is getting somebody up out of the way so that he can give you what he's got for you. I believe that in the next few chapters of time, he started teaching a parable, Pastor McNary, because there were a lot of folk in the room, but he didn't want everybody to hear the message. He had to say, but it wasn't to everybody. So he spoke in parable so that who needed the message, got the message, and the ones who didn't need it, didn't get it. I know in my life what God did sometimes is he held out blessing me until I stopped some folk loose. I had to find a new point at the time and then he started blessing and pouring into my life. Jesus went and he talked and, and, and he healed. And, and the Bible says when, when he saw the multitudes, somebody ought to say thank you Jesus. That's your blessing right there. 
But when he saw, he, he went too busy. Healed. He went too busy casting out devils. He went too busy healing out people of sickness and disease. But when he saw the multitude. See, see, we're in that multitude. It's not just one person, but when he saw the whole multitude, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. When he looked out at the crowd and saw the condition of the folk, listen, here, yeah, some of them were broke down. Some of them were tore up, trying to flow up. Some of them was blind and crazy. He said they were scattered abroad like sheep who didn't have no shot. He said, I looked at them and I just took that. Because they fainted. You look down and say they're not even on the same bus. All scattered around. Paul himself, the ministry, looked like a pastor throughout. All these t shirts of different colors, everybody on different sides the red team, the green team, the blue team, the yellow, all these clicks in the church. He said, I'm so sorry, but they look fainted. They've been having church a long time and they look tired. They praise the fire. Their worship is fire. Their attendance, help me, Holy Ghost, is fire. Their checkbook is full. Oh, it's getting tired. It's the last day. They do praise right now. As a sheep, it doesn't have a shepherd.
said to his disciples, and I'm almost done. He said, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Now, you got to put the two verses before that. He, he was dealing with people who were sick, disease, blind, crippled, crazy. Listen here. And he went healing them, and he told the disciples, the harvest is plenty. And then, now, see, some of us pastors, we, if we could pick our church members, they man, you start with City Hall, what you make? We have one of our new members uh, application. How much you are? Come on, you're going to be a good member. I, I didn't get that happen now. I didn't, I didn't went to a church before and I had somebody look at my suit and said, We know you're going to make a good job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, The harvest is plenty. Now, the harvest. Now, as I close, there are three seasons to a harvest. There are three seasons that has to happen. Before any harvest. Harvest is a good time. Harvest is when you're supposed to get excited. Because if you like peach cobble, it means the peach is already. I, I, I like peach cobble. I don't know about y'all, but harvest is going to make you excited. But there are three seasons, as I close, uh, that, that come through the harvest. The first is planting. And the first is planting. The second is pruning. And the third is producing. Let me go ahead and walk through this and I won't get out of here. The first one is planting. There has to be somebody that has some faith that oh, is that word. Wow. To plant a seed in the ground. I thought about the mustard seed. We passed them out at church. And I want to know who still got that mustard seed. That, hey man, look aside. Oh, they are not letting it go. But it was so plant. The seed was so small. Jesus said, you don't need a lot of faith. Just as a mustard seed. And you'll be able to say to mountains, move and be thou cast into the seed. And it'll be done. Yeah. Now, now, see, some of us don't go around and we don't go to Mount Rushmore until I do it because the Bible says it, right? Right, right, right. Uh, we, we go with uh, Sister Cheryl Psalms. Uh, where were you at? What, what, so, what songs we've been working with the kids for a year? Psalms. Uh, uh, all right. And in that verse, it says you can walk on circles. Walk on circles. Right. Okay. Okay. See, see, everybody, that'll give you a right to go jump into a snake bed. <laughs> because it said, see, sometimes serpents got two legs. <laughs> Let me get on out the way this <laughs> Jesus is saying, the harvest is plenty. He, he looked at all the broke people and he said, the harvest is plenty. Not like some of us. We look at all the rich and ed educated folk who drive high school. That's what we want from them sometimes, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, but they get the folk of numbers, they ain't got no money for church with that car. Though. <laughs> it's not the uh, G Mac, Ford Motor Credit, Kids Credit Union, PEMC Bank. Look at here, bro. I'm going to get it next week when I get my check, when I get my taxes. I'm going to put something on. Let's just hear. Jesus said the harvest is plenty based on the broken people. He's trying to tell you the way I equipped you, you turn on light and you walk in the room. He said, never have, have not the righteous been forsaken nor the seed been ever break. He said, you are the light of the world. So if you live in a house and your house starts, something wrong with your life. If you go to a church and your church is dark, something wrong with your life. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. But look how he looked at the Lord, the, the, the trodden down, those who were broke, busted, and disgusted, and said, guess what? This is good up in here right now. He looked in the parking lot. They were coming, walking on scooters, listening with buckets. But Jesus said, the church is about to grow right now. Yeah. If we try to tell God how to bless us, you know, you know we, we want to tell God how to bless us. I need a musician that can play in 20 keys. I need, I need a Mississippi bass quiet singing a full part of harmony. We need a hand to be free with a list to speak a rover in the corner. I wish that I had. Listen, no, no, all you got to do is be faithful to what God said. You don't have to, to try to be better than any other church. Just be the church that God has called you to be.
shall be cast down and hurt in the fire. But he that bears fruit goes in the season number two, the purging season, so that they can bear more fruit. See, we get to that purging season, we don't like it. You don't get cut one way or another. <laughs> Amen. If you get cut down and thrown into the fire for having no fruit, or God prunes you. Yeah. He prunes a minister. Oh, let me make this plan. Get out of the way. I got seven minutes. He prunes a minister. Yeah. When you prune, you cut off excess. You cut off what's not needed. You cut off something that's not producing, that's, that's taking all the nutrients out of the vine. Sucking all the air conditioning up in the summertime. Sucking all the heat up. And listen, talk this morning that we are the church yeah. and we want million dollar ministries on two dollar offerings. <laughs> we expect you to pick up everybody in the city yeah. and you know how much time it's called that you say the price of yeah. gas don't know why listen here. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm visiting let me take that back. <laughs> so I don't know that's how we go with it. But, but we talked about expectations not being real. Yeah. Our kids, we expect them to be the, the greatest students, but we don't help them with homework. You know, we, we, we expect them to spend the whole day at school and always have to go to a parent teacher meeting, but we can't get this plan at home with them. Oh, Lord, Lord. In our marriages, in our relationships, yeah, I want my boo to be committed and I want her. But, but not if I'm working in all these late hours and never had no money. Come on. Same <laughs> with the ladies, too. Over oh, that supermarket for six hours and come back with a quarter of orange juice. <laughs> but once your man to be faithful. We got all these expectations that are not even real. We need to bring them up. Jesus said the laborers are few. Now, now, as I can hear this, pray that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into this. Harvest. Now, after the pruning stage, we're going to production. We're going to producing. Listen to what the prayer is for. The prayer is not for an increase. The prayer is not for a harvest. The prayer is not for a, a newer car. Ain't no longer a new car. Ain't no nobody. Amen. Brown like is too. But but that's not what the prayer is for. The prayer is for laborers, not bodies, not church folk. He says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers, somebody willing to work. You see, Nehemiah rebuilt the wall because the people had a mind to work. If you look at chapter two of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, all it does is mention who is working. Are you on a roll call? Do you got a time card here? Don't come up in here Friday looking for no paycheck if you don't have a time card here. So what Nehemiah did was he checked everybody by name. Yeah, that Rollo was here. Rollo kids from here. Check them all out. And then Jackie, yeah, Betty Jane was here. Give her a check too. But if your name ain't on the road, if you haven't done any work, listen to me. Drink of water, you got a drink of water. But, but, but 
least he realizes that I can serve in any capacity in this church. We got folk that walk in and don't want to do anything. Get the Holy Ghost. They want to run everything. I'm so glad you ain't got down here at Mass. I'm so glad you ain't got down here at Mass. I'm going to put them on the north end of the street. Sometimes there's some folk that want to have all the words to say. We, we praise the nigga that uh, you go to five and, 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 and uh, BMW withdraw. And then we want the pastor to pick us up, pay our car note, put a little stuff on the insurance. Yeah. <laughs> As I close, there is a harvest for God. And the harvest goes through three seasons, a season of planting. There was somebody over 70 years ago that planted. Yes. And they had to have faith. Yes. They had to have faith because when you were in church, you got us folk, you know, that business thing, you're going to fight. <laughs> but y'all still here. There had to be some pruning along the way. See, I believe in God's, God's man. Before he multiplies you, he will divide you. Yeah. And before he adds, he might subtract you. I figured out that the reason why some people wouldn't come to church because some folk was in the way. Amen. They met the wrong person in church. Amen. And I'm so glad I'm asking. I know it looks like that. Y'all look so nice and so pretty and so long and pretty. But I'm here to tell you, you can walk down the street at the church and meet the wrong old man. To make you not want to go back to church. God said the harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. And God will allow us to choose our own position. We need to line ourselves up in the blessings of God. I heard somebody say that God promised them a, a, a preacher for a husband. <laughs> And I, and I asked him, I said, you got him yet? Not yet. <laughs> Years passed by. And, and I ran into him again, and I said, well, did you get that, that preacher yet? <laughs> Not yet. I'm reminded of two boats in a helicopter where a man was, was stuck drowning. And, and then he said, God's going to save me because I'm a Christian. And the muscle came through on a rowboat, told him, come on, Christian, get in. And he said, no, I'm a Christian, you keep on rowing. The story goes to say that an atheist came by with a, with a motorboat and said, come on, you Bible believing Christian, come on and jump off in my boat, I'll save you. Christian said, no, I'm too holy for that. I believe in God Almighty, he told him. Then you had a helicopter come by and it had his, 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 his neighborhood church, his competition, a church he didn't like. And that number to just get on their nerve. I see you down there broke down. You need a ride? And he said, oh, my dad, my dad, I'd rather swim. I'm not getting on no helicopter. You just go the gates. And then with Peter, he says, Peter, you know, I paid my tithes. Gave my offering. I sang in the choir. I even taught vacation Bible school one year. He says, I told everybody that God was going to save me. How come you got me up here at the gates of heaven all my food and let me drive? Peter looked at him and says, Well, he sent two boats in the helicopter. <laughs> But sometimes we need deliverance from me. Because all I seek to do is hurt me. I worship you. There is not like you. Father God, we say thank you. I worship you.
our relationship with God. It's not about me. Nobody's perfect. We're all justified by the blood of Jesus. And if you're here, Christ, we are Christ Jesus. There is no 